Hi all and welcome to today's webinar focus on enhancing business efficiency through SharePoint analytics. We are delighted to have you all with us today. My name is Luzanne, the account manager here at Cardilog Analytics. And today we will explore practical strategies for data analysis and decision making during our webinar titled Mastering SharePoint Analytics Strategies for Data Driven Success. Firstly, let's get some logistics out of the way. Please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation via the Q&A feature. I will address as many as we can at the end of the webinar. We are also recording this webinar and will share the link with you all after the event if you want to share this with a colleague. Now let's dive in. In regards to the agenda for today's webinar, we'll start out with a very short introduction. I'll talk a bit about Cardiolog Analytics and who we are, and then I'll jump into a presentation of Cardiolog Analytics reports to show you how those reports should be leveraged for SharePoint in order to get the best insights and actionable data for improving user engagement, optimizing content, and enhancing overall SharePoint site management. And as I've mentioned, at the end we'll have time and I'll be taking some Q&A. So just a quick introduction, Cardilog Analytics has been providing analytics for 365 for about 18 years now. We started back with SharePoint on-prem and we grew with Microsoft to the cloud. And today we track everything from SharePoint to Teams, OneDrive, Viva Engage, formerly known as Yammer, and so on. So also just a little bit about our vision as a company. This slide shows our evolution. Our goal is to help our customers constantly improve SharePoint based on how it's being used. The four main pillars that we talk to our customers about are monitoring activity, which is tracking the usage within SharePoint and Microsoft 365 platforms with in-depth internet analytics, insights, and usage reports. Our customers realize that understanding usage analytics often simply is not enough, and they wanted a way to take action based on the insights gained from monitoring their portal usage. And then in hands, we want to make sure that we are constantly improving SharePoint and Microsoft 365 based on these pillars. And the idea is to have actionable metrics, which will allow us to constantly make SharePoint better for our users by increasing corporate productivity and improving portal ROI. And then the final pillar is incentivize. We can turn the data into a game as well. So instead of just the admins owning the data, we can make sure those end users have access to the data and can see how they compete with their colleagues and get points and coins. And we conclude by seeing how we can turn that raw data into exciting gamification and leverage that within our organization as well. So welcome to our webinar, Mastering SharePoint Analytics Strategies for Data-Driven Success with a special focus on query log analytics. Today, we will delve into how query log analytics can transform your SharePoint data into insightful, actionable intelligence. Our session is designed to guide you through the advanced features of query log analytics, SAS, helping you to enhance decision making and improve overall efficiency in your SharePoint environment. Whether you're a seasoned expert in SharePoint or just starting to explore its possibilities, this webinar will equip you with the knowledge and tools needed to fully leverage the power of query log analytics in your organization. So let's begin our journey towards more data-driven success in SharePoint. I'll go ahead and jump straight into the reports that we have available out of the box, and I'll talk you through ways in which we can leverage the different metrics provided in those reports. So here you can see the Power BI interface, and we can already see on the left-hand side the Cardiolog analytics reports. In Power BI, it's very easy to create and customize your own visuals and reports. However, we've built several pre-made dashboards that focus on the main goals that organizations using SharePoint tend to have. This is to make it easier for our customers to get started and to make sure that you're getting the analytics you need in order to meet your portal goals. Our reports provide insights around SharePoint adoption, engagement, um, improving usability, optimizing portal resources, collaboration, and more. So let's dive right in. 
In this is the usage overview report, which is designed to give a high level overview of how the portal is being used. The first thing you can see on the left hand side is the portal tree filter. This is the hierarchy of the portal, including all of the site collections that you're tracking and everything within them. So all the sub sites, lists, libraries, and then the actual items. So all the pages, documents, list items. Everything will appear here in the portal tree filter and you can use this in order to filter any report to focus only on the particular areas of the portal that you are interested in. For example, if you want to get information about all of your tracked sites, you can just click here on all to see data now for everything. But if you are, for example, the site owner and you want to get information specifically um, about just your site, you can also select that specific site from the portal tree filter. And just get the relevant information specifically for your site. You can see immediately the dashboard gets filtered. Or maybe you want to focus on specific lists or library. If, for example, you have a particular list that you use for news articles and you want to see how these news articles are performing, you'll just click on the relevant list to see data only for the pages in this list. If we look at page type filter, you can also go a step further and filter by that page type. You can see here, uh, for instance, by news page, unpublished news pages, or a regular site page. The idea is that you can select any object you want to see information for, for a specific area within SharePoint using the different filters available. You can also have the option to utilize the hub site filter where you will have the ability to focus on a specific hub site. This feature enables you to view detailed information for all the sites connected to your chosen hub site directly within the report. Once you select a hub site, let me select this one for example, the portal tree will automatically update displaying only the sites that are associated with your selected hub. Please also keep in mind that your selections in the portal tree filter within this usage overview report will synchronize across other report pages as well. This means if you select the data for a specific hub site, you'll see the visuals filtered for just that selected site in all other reports as well. Another type of filter we have is based on the content type. So if you want to focus on documents or blog posts, for example, all you need to do is click on that relevant button. And now you can see that this filtered your entire report to show only the relevant information. This also includes any custom content types that you've added to SharePoint. So let's dive into our first area of focus for today's session, content. So if we want to understand content trends over time, what's most popular in terms of content or that inactive content and so forth, we can see that right here within the content section. Focusing on the table, here I have a list of all the most popular content items in SharePoint, which helps us understand what we can really focus on and what actions we can take. So. I've put this table into focus mode, and by default, we are seeing all of the most popular content based on these page view numbers. Also, you can see things such as when it was last viewed, how much time they spent viewing this content, how many unique users viewed the content, and even who created this content, as well as its size. This is really powerful information because once you know what's popular, you may want to link that to your SharePoint homepage. So this page, for example, is really popular. So instead of people wasting time searching for it on your site, you can now quickly make a link to it on the homepage because you now already know that this is the most popular among your users. 
even going a step further, if you already have a design space for quick links or links you believe to be commonly used, this feature becomes even more valuable because you can verify and ensure that these links truly are the ones receiving the most engagement. I can also flip this around. And now I'm showing all of the inactive content. So that's all the content not being used or that haven't been viewed at all, whether it's sites, whether it's documents, pages, wikis, and more. So what is really the real value in this analysis? It's all about streamlining our content to enhance user experience. First, we can identify and remove content that isn't being utilized. Then if we see that we have important but outdated content, let's go ahead and update that content. And lastly, if that content is already up to date and you know it's not being viewed by your users, let's increase its visibility if that content is something you want your users to be seeing. This could mean linking it to your homepage, like I mentioned before, or making it more accessible in other ways. By doing so, we can ensure that our users can easily find and access the content that matters most. So that's the action we can take based upon what's most popular and also the least popular content. Let's go back to the main report and look at some of the other ways to interact with the data that we've collected. First of all, we have our date filter. Our date slicer tool allows you to tailor to the date range for your analytics. We typically store a year's worth of data, but this can be extended beyond 12 months. You can access usage data from the time your site was first onboarded and tracked. Every data point in this dashboard is interactive. When you click on any element, it filters the entire dashboard based on your selection. For instance, clicking on a specific department will display usage data exclusively for that department. And that means for something like the most popular content, you can now drill down to see which items are most utilized by, say, the purchasing department. Similarly, selecting a specific content item as you see also filters the report to show its performance and the departments engaging with it the most. Cardiolog Analytics also provides versatile functionalities, including export, edit, and sharing options with capabilities to embed reports into SharePoint, export them to Excel, PowerPoint, or PDF, manage report permissions through the front desk team, subscribe for regular updates, and customize reports easily with a variety of data fields and visualizations. Let's now turn our attention to the Visitor Adoption Overview Report. Understanding user adoption is a critical aspect for any organization utilizing SharePoint, and stakeholders often ask how they can better engage users to utilize the portal more efficiently. And to address this, we've developed a series of reports focusing on user adoption. This particular report provides a comprehensive overview of adoption metrics. Take the active user rate graph. This particular report provides a comprehensive overview of adoption metrics. It contrasts the number of active SharePoint users, those who've logged in at least once during a selected date range, against those inactive users. Another key metric is the average depth of visit, which indicates the average number of pages visited per session. So if you would have seen a low number, for example, one or two, it would suggest limited engagement and would signal a potential area for improvement. Above that, we also have the average length of visit metric, which reflects a typical time user spent per visit and is a key indicator of how deeply users are engaging with the portal. Extended visit durations usually imply that the content resonates well with the users, hitting at a successful user experience design. In contrast, brief visits may signal the need for more, the need for more engaging and more relevant content. 
Also keep in mind that we do stop counting a session after 30 minutes of idle time. So if a user is interacting with the portal and then leaves to make a cup of coffee, for example, and returns after 30 minutes, once they return, that session will be counted as a new session. Meanwhile, single page visit rate. This percentage reveals the initial user engagement by tracking visits with only one page viewed. A high rate may indicate issues at the first point of contact, like unclear navigation or unengaging landing pages. This metric is great because it can help us enhance our portal's entry points to better capture and retain user interest. Underneath, we have bounce rate. In Codilog SAS, a bounce rate is defined as a visit that ended within 30 seconds. So this will show us the percentage of visits that lasted no more than 30 seconds. We can find more information about our users at the bottom with this chart, such as how many new versus returning visitors we have to our sites. However, let's take a look at our active and inactive users report to delve deeper into those activity levels. The active and inactive users chart breaks down user activity by department, helping identify departments with higher rates of inactivity. For instance, by selecting the sales department, we can now explore their specific engagement metrics, including the depth and duration of visits and identify both highly engaged as well as less active users within the department. This can also help us identify which departments are most active within SharePoint and which departments are lagging behind and help us to identify where we might need to focus some more of our training efforts or encourage more user interaction instead of taking a blanket approach. I'd now like to show you the following visitor adoption KPIs report. Since seeing a lot of metrics can be overwhelming, we wanted to show you the bottom line that everyone can understand. And with this particular report, we can help to translate that time wasted and bad user experiences into monetary value. So basically, we convert our data into money lost as well as time wasted so that you are able to clearly see how this impacts the business. Now to explore this in a little bit more detail, this particular report is comprised of several key metrics that can show you how much money you might be losing due to aspects such as inactive user licenses, the creation and storage of unused content, the time wasted on failed searches or even slow loading pages, all of which directly affects the user experience. This report can help to demonstrate how these elements impact your business's performance. And in order to make this applicable for you, you're able to customize the input fields here on the left, taking into account various factors such as salaries, cost of user licenses, storage, costs, and so forth. And then the metrics in this report will be recalculated accordingly, showing you, like I said, the bottom line. A really great dashboard that I want to hop into next is search optimization. Usability is something that's really important to be aware of, especially if you are trying to improve adoption and engagement. And this means ensuring the portal is user friendly with effective search functions, straightforward navigation, and easy access to relevant content. We see that when users can find what they need easily, it can lead to increased adoption, especially since we know that search can be a preferred method of getting around the portal. So if search isn't working well for them, then it's going to be really difficult for them to use the portal productively. So at first, I want us to look at this graph, which shows us the top search phrases used across the portal or on individual sites. This gives us a real sense of what our users are looking for and what matters to them. Take this top search term, business data. I'm clicking on it. 
to show you more details like how often it was searched by how many unique users and this already tells us how popular a search term actually is. For instance, if lots of users are searching for a particular app or document, this is now a clear sign that it's something that they need. We can make things easier for everyone by simply adding these popular items to more visible spots like the home page or our navigation menu. We can also see the average number of results that were returned when searching for a specific phrase if this number is really low. It could be that there is just not enough relevant content around the search item, in which case we'll just need to add to that content. Or it may be that the content is actually there, but there are some permission issues perhaps, or the search engine may need to be optimized. Alternatively, if too many results are returned, this may be overwhelming for a user to have to sift through so many results just to get to that relevant one. We can also see the average search result position. This is the average position of the results that were clicked on from search results pages. So on average, did users click on the first result or the second result or only the 10th result? If we see that users clicked around the ninth or the 10th result like here, meaning that they had to go through nine or 10 or 11 results before finding the relevant content. And then that might be something that we'd want to improve. One way that we can improve that easily is by checking which search results users that actually click on in the search results clicked table and then promote or bookmark these search results. And finally, the percentage of searches that led to a click on a search result. This is a really important metric if we want to understand how well search is performing in general or for a specific search phrase. Of course, if a user searches for something and then doesn't click on any result, it's most likely because they didn't find the relevant results for them. So for example, if we see here uh, that 50% of users who search for a specific term didn't click on any results. They presumably weren't able to find anything relevant. They weren't able to find what they were looking for. Instead, they needed to change their search phrase or to try and find the relevant information in some other way. As we can see, search optimization does play a crucial role in our portal's usability and by understanding and refining just how users are actually searching and not guessing what they are interested in, we can enhance the experience and improve user satisfaction. As we've seen in the other reports, we can drill down to show popular search terms for specific departments, or you can even customize the report to show popular search terms by any other user profile attributes, such as country, job title, and so forth. Let's look at a couple more reports in the usability category. I quickly want to hop into slow pages. This report identifies the pages on your site that take the longest to be displayed to your users. So looking at the bar chart, we can see the top slow pages on your site ranked by these page load times. We know that page load time can be affected by various factors such as the size of the page, the complexity of the content and the design, the speed of the internet even, the internet connection and so forth. Therefore, it is important to regularly monitor your slowest pages and keep checking that the page load times remain within the acceptable range that the users are having a positive experience when accessing the portal. If we have a look at visitor technology, this report will help you to delve into how users access SharePoint, be it through desktop or mobile, or what browsers and operating systems they prefer. This data is really useful also for optimizing user experience. For example, if we see a few users on a certain mobile device, might mean that they need a bit more help and guidance on how to use it. Just by making access simpler, we encourage more people to use SharePoint on different devices and hopefully make it more easily accessible for them. 
let's now shift our focus to the navigation category, where we have a few reports focusing on user navigation within the portal. We'll start here with the navigation overview report to get a better understanding of the flow of user navigation from our most popular pages to specific pages you're interested in to see how users typically arrive at a page and their journey thereafter. Here is how this will work. By selecting a page, URL from the filter, the report will dynamically update to show the navigation paths associated with that page. This means we now get a clear picture of the user behavior and then understanding both how users land on this particular page and where they head to next. It's incredibly useful for making content placement decisions. If I jump into exit pages, as we think about user journeys, it is important to analyze what is leading them away from the portal and pinpoint the areas with the highest exit rates. With the top exit pages chart, you can see listed the top exit pages from which users navigated elsewhere or simply closed their browser window. We want to check when thinking about our top exit pages if these are indeed pages we expect our users to leave from. For example, if we can see that one of our top exit pages, like this one here, is training videos. So once we know that this has a high exit rate, we can further investigate this and find out whether the training video was useful and users completed watching it. Or perhaps the content was not engaging enough and they simply closed out the browser and exited. Combining this information with other metrics such as the average duration, we can conclude which of the two assumptions may be true. As you can see here, engaging with a training video that might be 30 minutes long, but the user only engaged for one, or in this case, two minutes is concerning. And this can help us take action on improving this training video in order to get users to engage with it for longer and not exit the page quite so quickly. If I open to external links, so under the navigation category, here we can explore the exit points by looking at our external links report. This report provides data on outbound links. These are the links on our portal that led users to external applications and resources. Understanding these link clicks is crucial because it shows us which external resources are most valuable to our users. On the left hand side, you have a list of pages that have external links. And once you select a specific page, you'll see the top external links on that page. And also how many times each link was clicked on, which is displayed next to it. Now let's take a look at the visitor journey. This report is also still in our navigation section and this report visually maps out the user navigation across our portal. Displaying a sequence of pages they visit from the moment they enter until they exit. When we select a particular node within this journey, it reveals the next pages that the users typically navigate to from that specific starting point. So what is the value in this? Well, by understanding users' navigation paths, we can optimize the user experience, making it smoother and more intuitive, meaning we can pinpoint popular routes and ensure that they are as user-friendly as possible, or identify less traveled paths and look into how we can improve them also. Moving on to the portal resource category and going straight to the portal resources overview report. It allows you to understand trends in the size and volume of important content that you're continuously adding to your sites. With it, you can monitor and optimize your portal resources effectively. Now let's take a closer look at what this report offers, this content item metric allows you to monitor the total number of content items within your SharePoint portal. It is crucial for keeping an eye on how your content is expanding over time. You can also see the number of contributors, 
that are creating content within your portal, which will allow you to assess user engagement and collaboration. You can also identify which content types contribute the most to the overall content size with the size by content type chart, and this information can help you prioritize content optimization efforts. Understanding these strengths and metrics is vital for making informed decisions regarding content management, resource allocation, and user engagement strategies. If we look at portal resources, our activity distribution report breaks down page views by geographic location and also shows us how activity varies by day of the week and even hour of the day. It's really useful because it lets us see patterns in how different regions engage with our portal. Plus, we can drill down from country level to state and beyond, getting a detailed view of activity distribution. And this helps us tailor content and outreach strategies to specific audiences based on their active times and preferences. Lastly, let's conclude our demo today with our AI analytics reports. These can profoundly augment both the functionality and the overall user experience in SharePoint. By tapping into these advanced analytics, organizations can unlock new levels of collaboration and productivity. NLP allows for deep understanding of user interaction and content, paving the way for smarter data-driven decisions, whereas PII ensures secure and compliant handling of sensitive data balancing enhanced analytics with robust privacy protection. What we present in this report is all the different PII detections and they are grouped into categories, such as personal information that could be passwords, credit card numbers, or national information that could be passports, details, things like that, also financial data and technical security. So you know in general for the entire organization how many PI detections you have for each category. You can use that as a filter as well. If you click on, let's say, financial, then of course it's going to filter the whole dashboard to present all the information about PI detections from the financial world and so on. So that's a really useful filter. This report Departments with PI detections by category helps us to understand in which departments there are PI detections and from which category. So, for example, if we can see that the quality assurance department has quite a lot of PI detections and most of them are actually personal, that means that mostly when people mention personal information, it was about the address of people or their name, some personal details about them, phone numbers, things like that. There are filters at the top as well. You can filter by certain BI categories and specific BII entities. Entities are the most detailed pieces of information from each category. Those entities are also shown here in the donut chart. So you can also use that as a filter and better understand how many detections you have of each entity and drill down even further. Below, we can see here the actual posts and discussions to, again, better understand where this data is detected. And the whole point would be to take action. So if we know that in the specific post by certain news on a certain date, as some PI detections, we want to deal with that and handle that. We can reach out to that creator of the posts and take some other type of action in the organization. But the idea is that we can actually pinpoint where those details are mentioned in posts and discussions so we can see what type of entities or which categories of entities were mentioned in that post. Of course, we won't show the actual personal information, but something else like the entity type such as address. Now, if we look at natural language analysis, this dashboard, shows us useful reports such as key phrases mentioned in posts and discussions. The purpose of this report is to emphasize the prominent phrases that reflect the most discussed topics in posts and their corresponding positive or negative sentiment. Languages used in post, this report provides insight into the language usage within SharePoint. So by applying filters such as English, for example, 
you can ascertain the sentiment of messages specifically in that language. Post sentiment ratio is a great report. This report helps you to understand the sentiment breakdown of posts and is crucial for company to gauge user feedback and identify areas of improvement. This report, which differentiates between positive, negative, and neutral sentiments, provides a snapshot of user perception, enabling an organization to proactively respond to user sentiments and refine their strategies accordingly. These are some of the excellent reports Carlylog Analytics has to offer your organization to leverage in order to get the best out of your SharePoint environment. Now we'll hop into some questions. Question I see here from Jeanette asking about licensing. Um, so Jeanette, the, the license is a yearly subscription based on the number of users we'll be tracking. I'm going to go to my last page here so you guys can see our contact details. If there's anything more you want to know, you can reach us there. And the last question from Paolo, um, how does deployment work? So what's neat about this tool, Palo, is that it is designed for SharePoint, so there's no need for customization. When you want to deploy with our setup wizard, you can get it up and running within an hour and already start collecting this amazing data that I've shown you today. I do want to mention as well that we have a free trial as well as a proof of concept for people who want a longer evaluation or those who want to try more environments and features versus the limited trial, which is free please reach out to us and we can share more information about what is included in Edge. So please visit us at intlock.com to book your free demo or trial of any of our solutions. And for more information and helpful tips, you can check out our blog at blog.intlock.com. And for more information, you can contact us at info at intlock.com. Have a good rest of your day and thanks for joining.